Well, Anish, uh, welcome back and you won a nice game today against uh, Viorel Iordacescu. Uh, I think he's a strong uh, Moldovian grandmaster. When you were paired with him, what were your uh, impressions about him? Yeah, he's um, not, not known to be a top player, but he's a well-known player. Um, and I played him already once before. He played Kings Indian and he played a brilliant game. And then at some point he collapsed uh, and I won that game. So. I knew that uh, the game might be very challenging, but I had uh, hopes that, okay, uh, if I'll maintain a good level throughout, I should prevail, because even that game, I think, uh, I mean, I guess he likes practice at the top level, so then he is less tenacious as uh, other top grandmasters. But he's obviously very dangerous and uh, creative. Mm -hmm. He's also known, uh, uh, he was also a coach of uh, Vugar Gashimov. Ah. Yeah. And okay, if you work with Vugar, of course, uh, you must be very creative. Yeah. Right. So in, in, it started off with uh, E4, E5. Yeah, you played this unusual. Okay, not unusual. Of course, uh, much more common is the Rui Lopez. Oh, no, sorry, the Italian with bishop C5. The bishop E7 line is less common, but it's quite uh, fashionable. And here, the main move is A4. Uh, but I decided to play this uh, suboptimal move A3 to to make him uh, think on his own already. And okay, there are some versions where I think might be more flexible, but, but mostly it's worse than A4, I guess. I mean, A4 is the main move. I mean, you know, uh, most of the times when beginners or let's say amateurs uh, look at this opening, they see something like this, like, okay, this is symmetrical here and this is symmetrical like this. So it seems a little boring. Uh, does it happen to you as well or? Well, no, no, you no, think no. Of, course, of, no of course it is. Obviously, I mean, obviously Sicilian is sharper because it's asymmetric, but there is something here to play for. First of all, I should mention that a3 or a4 is uh, against this move knight a5, yeah? Uh, if he catches this bishop, then uh, he, he will have bishop pair. So a3 or a4 is aimed against that. And uh, very big, uh, in general, the whole concept of Italian is uh, about this knight on c6 and this pawn on c3. And uh, uh, this is actually a bad piece uh, for black because uh, these squares are not available. Uh, this c6 d5 is not possible. Whereas white has d3, and this knight is more flexible going here. So what you uh, often see is that with bishop on c5, a knight uh, takes this route. Or he takes uh, this route here in this opening. Like in the Rui Lopez, or even knight b8. I mean, this knight is a problem. So in a way, already here, you could say white, why white is playing for advantage is because he is going to put this pawn here on c3, and uh, he's going to have this bad knight on c6. Uh, so that's why there is a point to, relo to Italian at all, otherwise... Uh, so many people play knight c3 and that's when they have actually left almost well, all the hope for an advantage. Except, except when they play knight c3, then they have the extra tempo in symmetric position. And extra tempo always gives you right. a chance to create some place. So there's, the knight c3 is also possible. Uh, but then, okay, you exchange the advantage of uh, bad knight against the... Um, uh, so, I mean, it's, uh, it's equal, obviously, but white has something to hope for. And, uh, because of this knight, usually white is the one going d4. And once white goes d4, like I went here, uh, I have the center, you know, I mean, I can And then, okay, amateurs already understand that white is a bit better because of the uh, center. So there is some point to it. And in this game, I had to... Uh, he played very creative. He, uh, there are many plans. There is a plan to simply go bishop e6. Also, there is a plan to go knight a5, c5. And also, there is a plan to go king h8, knight g8. Yes. And h6, uh, knight h7 is also a plan. And here I regret my phone on a3, because uh, after c3 I'd rather have it on a4, it's a bit, but okay, it's, it's fine. Uh, yeah, it was not much for me. I was thinking he might uh, trade uh, like this, but again, as I said, okay, I might go d4 first somewhere. And here I had to give the bishop, I think he underestimated that, I will play uh, without the bishop pair. But actually, quite interestingly, in this position, it's very difficult for him to to do anything. I mean, even if he... Okay, I stopped g6, but even if he were to get g6, suppose even I go before g6, bishop g7, okay, this is nice, but after rook d1, I don't see how he can further uh, move, because... Queen if he e7? Goes, yeah, uh, if he goes queen e7, I have knight e3, and then... And uh, king h8 f5 is a bit unrealistic. I mean, I can also take on e5 already at this point. Yeah. Also, there are sometimes ideas of bishop d5, putting pressure on these uh, things. It's, it's quite, uh, I mean, surprising that you are able to create so many problems. To be honest, uh, it took me a while myself to, to realize that. I mean, originally, I, I was not too optimistic here, but then, yeah, it took me a while to realize that 
actually this position is better for white. Because at so, first I'm a big fan of two bishops, yeah. so it, it wasn't easy for me. Should he have taken on f3 maybe or no? Uh, yeah, he could have, absolutely, yeah. He could have, then I have, uh, once again, this knight thing, I will go d4 uh, quickly. And, uh, okay, I have, uh, we have the opposite color bishop, but there's also knights on the board and queens on the board, so it's far from drawish. And he has these weak squares, you know, the light squares I'm controlling and... Uh, you already see some potential, you know, h4, h5. Like, maybe you remember this game of Vichy against... against... Runger? Marcus mm -hmm. Runger? Yeah, yeah. Where he had open color bishop uh, position and he won. Yes. So... Um, the white is slightly better there, I believe. Yeah, and here he went for a very... Okay, k7, I mean, hoping for g6, but it's never... It never worked. I think even such a position... So, such a soft uh, king side. I mean, uh, I don't know, f4, maybe e5 or f5, the e5 most likely. The, I mean, the th7, g6, h6 is very yes. ugly. And I think he should have... His, what I was thinking about, I was choosing between b4, which would allow g6, and this here I thought he should go a4. And it's very clever, because uh, if he gets a5, a4, he goes knight a5, he has some b3 square, and if I go a4, which he was worried about, but that I think is not a great idea, because at some point, he will do this, and he has a square. So I think a5 was the only thing that I mean I thought would give me something to think about. Otherwise, my position was very easy to play. And this was a bad plan because here turns out that knight b3 is not working because of queen d1, knight 5 b3. He's losing a piece, and then this whole uh, the activity is pointless because I'm threatening to go before, and then both pieces are out of play. Mm -hmm. To justify it, he traded bishops, but he's not even able. Okay, suppose he would be able to get the knight back to c6. Suppose he would be able to get uh, bishop to g7, and he's just slightly worse. Um, but I have a very strong idea to go queen b5, and uh, it seems as if I missed c6, because I attacked the knight, but c6, but then I just go back, and he doesn't have knight c6. Ah, nice. And now he goes c5, he's going to have this huge hole, and I was choosing between... Okay, I mean, this is probably very big for me, but also uh, even dc was interesting, and then just play for the hole on d5. And this was very nice. I mean, after b5, knight e3, I force his knight to b7, and knight uh, has to either be on c6 or uh, or d7 in this position, ideally on d7. It was actually quite funny here, for a while I was missing a funny resource. I thought d5 was very good, I thought b6 is the only move, huh? it seems uh, natural, the b6 is the only move, that's what knight b3 is there, surprising. And now knight goes back to c5, and actually this is the best position he, he can ever have, because now his knight is back in the game. But queen b5 was good, yeah, and here... Um, he has a terrible knight, and I could. I originally planned to play for some a4, uh, c4 for this, against this knight, but then I realized I can just play in the center, and now I'm threatening some d, knight g4, queen d7 things. Mm -hmm. He's huge trouble, and h5 only helped me uh, just crash through. Oh, I never, I never play, I never play g4. Yeah, but, g4 but when knight is on b7, I'm not scared. I mean, I'm always scared of some attack, but but with knight on b7, even I play g4. I think it's very strong. And, uh, I mean, if knight is somewhere on e6, it would be a different matter, but uh, it would be a general uh, position. I mean, if knight was somewhere okay, it would be just slightly better for me. Although, I think okay. he should try to get his knight into the game, but it looks No, but here is still... I mean, yeah. even here he cannot even... There is no square on the board for the knight, because uh, I got all this... I mean, these weaknesses he created, yeah? In order to... Uh, in order get to get back. the knight back, yeah? Because it was just getting trapped, yeah? So it was not from happy, uh, happy life. No, it's just hopeless. I'm, and okay, of course, when we play on the king side, I mean, with knight on b7, I have, have all my pieces there. I'm, now knight is jumping to f5. I mean, knight comes to f5, as well as, as these things are still on cards, the easy ones, but also just uh, rook g1, queen e2, knight away, and uh, mate here, yeah? So just... Uh, and in the game, queen e2, yeah. And uh, if queen c8, I go knight f5. I mean, one nice line is rook g6, let's say, take, take, take. And uh, just for ah. so here he is hopeless, and after ED, uh, positional CD is completely winning, but knight d4 wins by force because I attacked this pawn here. And uh, yeah, the desperation this would be a little practically tricky because ah, uh, I'm not sure actually it would be tricky because queen g5, I mean, okay, wait, rook is hanging on the 8. Yeah, well, this would also be completely winning, but uh, knight g4 is very clean. I keep my queen on uh, king side, and he doesn't even have a check here. And here I'm the one mating with knight 7 rook g1, and this is covered. So I'm pretty winning. It was very nice how you kept all your threats intact. You know, like, in this position, you didn't uh, let him breathe easy. Everything was happening somewhere around here. 
when you played G4. There is always threats of D into E5. There are D5 threats. There yeah, are, yeah. I mean, I kept flexibility. Yeah, yeah. yeah but, but to be honest, this position I believe it is much more winning than it looks because uh, yeah. if you think about this, I mean, he's probably uh, bad regardless of the uh, placement of the pieces in the structure. But especially with knight on B7 and the bishop on F6, I mean, he's completely lost uh, here. He's uh, rook B1 was uh, very strong. I mean. Playing for this uh, would be selling my position much too cheaply. Um, this was just this is just crushing, I think, in D, G4, and D7. So. And when you play a game like this, do you feel uh, satisfied or do you think uh, it was too easy? Something like mm -hmm. that. No, he's a, if I had played this game against 2100, I would feel it was a bit easy. But, uh, well, if I managed to beat a 2600 Grandmaster this way, it's not so bad. Also, I'm very happily taking my ELO points. And okay, I mean, he played very bad from here, but actually it's very hard to make moves here. Uh, of course, a stronger player, uh, a top player might have gone back, let's say, maybe to bishop g5, because in hindsight, bishop c6 was very bad. He would have given me a tempo and then play on. Uh, of course, yeah, he should have seen that this was bad in, a, in advance, yeah. But uh, on the other hand, you know, he wants to do something. And, uh, but of course, in hindsight, it looks like a very easy game. But it's always nice. I mean, I, I never... Uh, you don't look, you know, the gifted force into the mouth, how do you say it? I'm saying. <laughs> okay, there are two things we want to ask you about, because you're the first one whom we have met on record after we got to know that Dvorkovic has become the new FIDE president. What, what's your opinion uh, about it? Uh, well, I, I'm hoping for some improvement, because um, I believe he has access to a lot of money, uh, because he is very well connected. I mean, in, uh, especially in Russia, and I assume also in countries around Russia, uh, such as Armenia, Azerbaijan, uh, Georgia, okay, Georgia not, Armenia, Azerbaijan, and uh, some others as well. I, I believe uh, probably an upgrade from uh, what we had, because uh, he has never seen aliens before, first of all. So that's better for his reputation. And um, yeah, he himself is a very wealthy man, and he has a lot of experience organizing stuff. I mean, he ran this world, uh, FIFA World Cup, which everybody was very impressed with. And he has a good reputation, uh, even amongst uh, in countries that are not friendly with Russia, uh, which is a good thing, because nowadays there are quite some. Um, and yeah, I, I hope, uh, for me, you know, I only, uh, from FIDE, I only care about the uh, top, top chess and the World uh, Championship cycle, which I'm uh, going to be a part of again next time. So I'm hoping for, um, uh, that the Grand Prix series will be upgraded, uh, that the, uh, perhaps the candidates will have a bigger prize fund and the World Championship match as well will have a bigger prize fund. And that's pretty much all I can personally ex uh, hope for. And also I hope the, the World Rapid and Blitz, uh, mm -hmm. if not in Riyadh, but uh, maybe in some other country, but still will continue will to happen. be. Yeah, it will happen hopefully and also with a good prize fund. So I, I hope all these events that they have to organize will be organized um, with good prize money and good conditions. And um, that's as much as I can hope. And, as for things like chess in schools and development of chess in um, countries uh, that are still uh, yet to develop, like in, uh, for example, Nepal, uh, uh, some African countries, like uh, you shot some videos with, um, uh, you know, with smaller countries. Yes. Togo, uh, Senegal, correct, and, uh, so so Swaziland, yeah, the, and, and so on. So um, that is also very important, but that, that you know, as I am selfish, doesn't affect me. Uh, but I, I hope uh, these things will be done as well. But as I said, for me, it's the World Championship cycle that mostly matters. Sure. So, and uh, the, the last thing what we want to ask you is about uh, Shankland yesterday. He won his game. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, saw the, I saw the video and uh, I was expecting that he will be nasty back, but he was just so defensive and I mean, I, I felt so bad about myself that I, I mean, of course, it was nothing personal. You know, you, I'm trying to, to say something, I'm trying to find a weak, uh, spot in a uh, team which has no weak spots, then I uh, end up uh, slightly uh, insulting him, slightly. Uh, but obviously, I mean, today he played this brilliant 95 idea. I don't know if you saw. I mean, yes. Uh, yes. I mean, so just, I've never seen this uh, idea before. I mean, the knight simply goes to Was E5. he prepared or uh, I think I he, he thought on the board? Yeah? I don't know. I've never seen. I mean, I know the idea that sometimes you take something on E5 and then go knight xc 6 but okay, the point is, according to me, that the knight on c3 is very critical for this to work. Because after knight e5, bd1, knight c6, queen c7 or something, knight d5 is coming. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I'm trying to recall, uh, there are some famous famous traps involving this sack, knight yeah. xc5. There are, 
but they are all they are all fake because they never happened in real life. Because for this knight takes e5, bishop d1, bishop takes f7, king is 7, 95 made to happen. Yes. You know what I mean, yeah? Ah, yeah, the yeah, like e4, e5, knight 3 knight 6 Yeah, the legal or not? Ah, the legal. Yes. Yeah, but it never happens because it cannot happen because nobody Play makes, plays this sequence. Nobody, everybody puts knight on f6 always, and then this never happens. But this this is uh, too too difficult for. Uh, Absolutely. What you are talking about D6, is something bishop like... Bishop c4, bishop g4, knight c3, and h6. h6. Yeah, yeah, this never happens, but okay, knight e5, bishop d1, bishop f7, and... And I believe there is also a line where something like what Schenkel did happens. What he did was knight e5, knight c6, yeah? Yeah, there was a line also like which where something like this happens. I cannot recall it right now. Well, in the Karokan. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, 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 here. Here, look. This, 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 this. This is some kind of line. Ah, really? Takes and knight c3. This looks good, right? Long castle and cb, yeah? Yeah, this basically... But, okay, here I take the knight, yeah? And what he did, he put knight e5 himself. This I have never seen. And, uh, okay, it's... But, of course, I mean, obviously, he's a very good player, and I'm... Uh, uh, yeah, of course, he, he he knows me and we are, we are good relations. He knows I, I didn't mean it uh, badly, so it's fine. Sure, it's fine. I okay. think also it never hurts to trash talk uh, your opponents a little bit. Yes, I, I also yeah. feel that uh, many chess players, after reaching a certain level, let's say beyond 27, 80 or 27, 70, not many, yeah, 10, 15 players, uh, they kind of become very mellowed down. They don't really uh, say their mind out. So maybe in yeah. that sense, you you are different. Because from... no, because uh, you usually uh, gain uh, haters, so to speak, rather than people who like you. There are very little people who like you for uh, saying something uh, provocative. Yeah, there are people usually who just like you for that. So they are so big. So why do you do that? Clever. Well, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't really care so much. I mean. I learned to. The, the thing is that first I got a lot of, uh, uh, I got a lot of uh, people disliking me for so-called making a lot of draws, which is not the case. I mean, people have done uh, research after that. I mean, I haven't done more draws than any of my uh, competitors, but I got this image, yeah, because at some point uh, it was cultivated by my, uh, by my opponents very much. I mean, Fabi made a lot of jokes, and um, uh, we joined in, and there are many people who, who created that uh, aura about me. So I was getting a lot of negative comments uh, for basically nothing. And now when I get negative comments justly, I also don't care. So, <laughs> I mean, I got a very good immune system for these things. And I, I start to enjoy it now. And uh, I mean, I, I find it fun to interact with people. And uh, as long as there are no physical threats, I'm <laughs> fine. So, so when people used to make all these jokes about uh, drawing and all, I think uh, you took them and you kind of became stronger. That's what you mean. No, yeah, at, at first, well, at first I was, I was very much bothered. Yeah, I was very much bothered. But uh, I guess it's just I needed time to for my brain to to realize that. Well, it's, it's normal, and I think uh, every yeah. Well, it's important because uh, no matter how much you are liked, there can always something happen. So if you're a public person that make um, a lot of people, uh, you know, whatever, write nasty things about you online. And uh, I haven't seen a person who managed to really not look and ignore. But I've seen a lot of people who managed, like me, to overcome that. And uh, I think it's nice I had such experience so early on in my career. And when it might matter in the future, I already had that. Sure. I think there's a lot for all of us to learn, not just on the board, but also off the board from Anisha. Thank you so much you. for sharing all of your experiences.